IAPRC 2020, position number seven, Luca Galarraga from Brazil. He's one of the best aquascapers in the world. He managed somehow to be in the top 50 all the time without interruption for 11 years. I'm Luca Galarraga from Brazil. I'm an architect, 55 years old, and I have two daughters. I love aquascaping, I love aquatic plants, and this is my life. I'm one of the owners of Aquabase, specialized shop of aquascaping in Brazil. I am proud to be here to assemble a Brazilian style aquarium in Green Aqua Shop. brought aquascaping to Brazil and you brought the Brazilian style to the whole world. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also a very modest man, so please encourage him. I give oh. you the stage. Luca Galarraga, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to uh, thank you and thanks for my partner Andre Longarso that he is working in Brazil, so I can stay here. I want to thank my wife that supports me all the time. Could you explain in two sentences how was the Brazilian style born? Well, the real uh, inventor of Brazilian style was what I learned from Mr. Amano. Mr. Amano said, we don't must create our layout symmetrically. Try to make it in the ratio three and two, or three and two. Behind the main stone, you put the most colorful and most textured plants. In 2000, and create the layout who won in 2011 the, the honor prize using this technique that I learned from Mr. Amano in 2010. Our team start to copy my style that I learned from Mr. Amano and then the, the layouts became similar and born the Brazilian style. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Thank, thank you. Say we have a dream together with me. We have a dream. Thank you very much. This is for Mr. Amano and for Felipe also, okay? Don't make an aquarium to win a contest. Make an aquarium that you like, that you uh, learn from it. Follow your dreams, please. For me, uh, speaking English is a, a nightmare, but, <laughs> but now I will do what I really know how to do and I will be more uh, comfortable. What's in your bag, Luca? Can you yeah, tell us what's in your bag? My secret bag. Super glue in a small size. <laughs> two, two tubes, not only one. Um, small cup, many brushes. Real painter. And uh, maybe uh, displays large amounts of substrate. Okay. I have a tweezer. First of all, we consider this frontal glass like your canvas. If you don't need, don't use 
large am amount of substrate near the frontal glass because your canvas will be shorter. For me, it is very interesting that you are not using power sand at all at the half front of the aquarium. Why is that? That I learned directly from ADA staff in Japan. You will have a thick layer of aqua soil in the back. More important is to have the, the power sand in this same position to create a little oxygen in the substrate. This is a concentrated fertilizer, really good for the roots. In Brazilian study, we, we, we use a lot of stem plants. Is there such a thing as too much fertilizers in the substrate? If you have thick layer of aqua soil, it's no problem. When I put aqua soil, I first put in the front and then move it to the back because if you just put in the back, this power sand move to the forward. One more bag, please. I like very high slope to the back. Now we can start placing the rocks. This stone will be placed something like this place. But if I put this stone now, all the soil collapses here, okay? So I pre must prepare a barrier, a wall. When I create barrier, I like to work this way. You put in the front and push it to the back, bringing the soil to the back. Now I realize that this stone is very close to the frontal glass, it's not okay. These Japanese brushes are awesome because the, the format is very easy in the corners. Now I create the bed for the big rock, but I must glue all these three stones together. Super glue, not the liquid one, nor the gel, the intermediary, and here, my secret, <laughs> dry aqua soil. Almost the same of this, uh, crushed. This technique, it's usable wood with wood, wood with rock, rock with rock again. I don't like to use paper, cigar filters, because they appear white. For me, this part is the most interesting, where you exert, exert the creativity. When people go to my shop to choose rocks, they don't care about the, the size, the shape. People choose a rock like a cube. A it's very bulky. Very bad bulky. Yes, very bad rock. So choose the, the thinner one. This is only for one purpose, to create the, the mountains at the back, okay? So a quick interview with Juan. What did you learn so far until now? I will say nothing. No. <laughs> for me, most uh, important things on uh, Brazilian style is the, the quality of the plants, healthy of the plants. And uh, I realized that uh, using flat stones uh, I, I never had this in mind. I use the biggest ones, heavy ones, and so on, and always had a lack of a space for my plants. Always think, how can I do it? Now I realize in just four stones that uh, the huge amount of, of, of uh, uh, aqua soil that he has to grow their plants is something that many times misses and lacks on my tanks. Tommy, just be here only to there we go again. Thank you. When I place the rock, I take care to rotate it a little bit to the front so the lights create shadows. How high do you want the main stone to be compared to the water level? Yes. And why? As 
high as possible, giving only two or three cent centimeters uh, below the surface. The secondary stone is much lower. Very good, Tommy. <laughs> I will sit here, okay? This stone is to give support to the main stone. Like a mountain, you don't see only a rock vertically. Always when I am creating my hardscape, I count with the plants. Here is not, not a problem because I think we can trim in the same height of the stone. soil fills the empty space between the, the rock and the soil, so you shake something and it gets more stable. When you put two rocks together, never use like that. Always transpass each other a little bit to create a larger stone. Never left gaps between them, it's not natural. But I need to ask you, Luca, where is the famous uh, Brazilian style V-shape? The V-shape will appear with the plants. The position of the tank in this place, we don't have the, the vision in this side. I choose the hardscape to create the, the main stone, the, the most powerful uh, portion of the layout in this golden ratio. So the layout here will flow from this side to this side. The flow in Japanese they call nagare is very important in a layout. You see almost like a, a flow of water. We have colors from green, yellowish and red here. Okay? Finally, to create deepness, profundity, I will work flat stones here in the back. Always look all the possibilities of the rocks, okay? Uh, I, I say that uh, rocks has face. You m create a layout more dynamic if you have a uh, foreground like this. Goes back and front, back and front, back and front, okay? If you align all, all the stones in the same line parallel to the, the frontal glass, it's not good. I like to left some soil here in the, in the base of the layout because we can plant even in the sand, the sand above this soil, you, we can plant carpets, it will go, grow nicely. I never used this before, sand heaven from the same line wild. The, the color of these stones fits very good. I like to use the Ada La Plata also, very nice sand. You must put it next to the stones, next to the mountains. In nature, you see some stones that rose from the big mountain. I was wondering, I uh, use a lot of serious stone, but they release calcium in the water. Uh, how do you tackle that? In Brazil, we have a very soft water from the tap water. And for us, it's not a problem with one change water weekly. Sometimes you need to fertilize it only with magnesium. The ratio between magnesium and calcium is wrong, maybe. If you fertilize with magnesium, even having a higher GH, you solve your problem, maybe. If we are thinking about Brazil, for us in, in Central Europe, it's an exotic country. It's supposed to be very hot. How do you 
uh, fight with with the heat. So it's a, it's a problem for you in in Brazil? No, in São Paulo, where I live, it's not a huge problem because we have one month high temperatures, but not so high, about 34 degrees outside. <laughs> Inside. Welcome to Europe, my friend. <laughs> so we are dying in 34. If you keep the aquarium water between 27, 28 degrees for one month, okay, it's okay. Above 30 is a problem for the plants. How often do you change the water? Well, uh, I consider best twice a week and a small amount that 30 or 40 percent one, once a week. What kind of filters do you use? What is the size of the filter? I like the Heim Classics and the Heim Echo. Usually the, the media that came from a Heim, it's good. When the new, new Heims came with plastic media, I removed it. I will start with uh, Microntemo Monte Carlo. It will be the main carpet plant here in this hill, okay? But we will try to make a natural atmosphere in the carpet. So we will mix some plants near the rocks, some Eleocaris parvula, Eleocaris minima. Don't plant only one kind of plant, carpet plant, like a golf course, okay? <laughs> it's not natural. I cannot plant here, it's impossible, but I can plant it here and they grow naturally to the front. These plants become to, to grow in two directions. But if you plant 15, 20 plants together, they start to grow round. Pusilla is Bigger or shorter? I think it's the same plan, but you ordered both. Uh. <laughs> Stoffels was kind enough to sponsor the event. They provided all the plants. It's actually a new brand uh, in our lineup for plants. And uh, it's the oldest aquatic plants company in the Netherlands. They've been established 1957. So okay. they didn't start yesterday. And they have a huge selection of plants with some rarities as well. So perfect for Brazilian style scape. When I plant a contest aquarium, I made a regular trim. They start to grow and one stem became in two. Then I trim again, then became in four and goes densely. Near the final photograph for contests, I let the, the plants grow more and put this beautiful uh, point inside the bushes. You are the master of color. Could you please explain us some uh, tips or secrets uh, about how you choose the plants, uh, the stem plants, and how you mix the colors, and where you place every color? Yeah. I plant Rotala HRA here, but I mix between the, the Rotala's HRA uh, some Rotala Sotundifolias, some Ludivigia Arquata, some Ludivigia Esperred. You mix the bushes with several species of plants, Marsileia uh, Hirsuta and Marsileia Crenata. Very similar plants, but the size of the leaves is very different. So the, we use the Hirsuta in the front, bigger leaves, and Crenata in the back, so you create perspective, you create deepness. And it's very important at the first setup that you plant densely. It's not because Balash need to sell many plants. It's, it's necessary. You, you need to have a, a big amount of plants in the first day so they can consume all the nutrients available in the water. If you use 
few plants you will have difficult with algae. In Brazil, we don't have the Caridina japonica, amano shrimp, so we must be careful with the algae. Can you substitute planting densely with uh, floating plants, for example, temporarily in the beginning, if you maybe your layout doesn't allow for it? I prefer you use, you use uh, some fast plants like Higrophila and then remove it because floating plants will make shadow in the, the tank, it will be maybe a problem. I wait about a month without fertilizers, only CO2. From the first day, I keep controlling the parameters of KH and GH. I keep the KH about five or six degrees. Usually, with a lot of stem plants, we need a lot, much fertilizers, but I, I prefer to wait that the plants show me the symptoms that they need some nutrients. Maybe you can tr make uh, staurogenes in this corner. Also choose the, the smaller the ones. The smaller ones. Okay. It's beautiful. Congratulations. <laughs> Your also is beautiful. Congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> when uh, the, your new plants start melting, or something something is wrong with them, usually, as we all know, right, we panic a little bit. Yes, many times things don't go well. Are we talking about life or aquariums? <laughs> 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 Both. <laughs> Usually the, the melting plant in the base, but the top is health, healthy. So you can remove the healthy tops of the plants, then with a hose, uh, siphon, and replant the, the tops health, healthy in the same position. These new plants will uh, the, the tank will react better, the, the filters are more matured, do some water changes and things start to go better. It takes time, takes patience, but it's a hobby, so enjoy your hobby. How do you plan the planting? So why do you say that it should go there? I'm worried about the, the height of the plants. The plants must develop in an upside position, like this. I will want to create the degradé from red to green. Are there any plants on your list that you don't normally use, that you don't have in Brazil? Yes. That you just liked from the list? I, I love the Pogostemon erectus, this plant, but we don't have it in Brazil. It's a shame. How important are the fish in a Brazilian style aquarium? Do you know what kind of fish do you want in this or it's yes. secondary? You know. I know. Because it's a fish that I never saw before. Yes, here. But all the small tetras, schooling fish are good to, to Brazilian style. See, the, the Anubias are tied for a small stone. When you have people that know, uh, the, with the knowledge of, of Luca, uh, you have to trust in, uh, in his opinion. So yeah, uh, every year, even this year, he, he has been following my tank since the uh, hardscape. I think Juan will be grand prize this year. <laughs> yes, yes, very strong work. These are Ludwigia arcuata. I will put some stems between the rotalas to create that effect that I commented. When I plant stem plants, I plant one stem by one. Between the stems, the water can flow and bring nutrients, CO2.
I am curious how you plant that. Do you put it like you spread it somehow in between the other stems one by one? Only few stem plants among the very dense rotalas principal plant. So it's only for touch of different color, different shape. Mr. Amano says one day to me, if you see that a finger fits here, it fits a plant also, <laughs> okay? Can you explain to me exactly how you want to trim this? Trim it like in, a, in an arc, curve it here behind the, the stone. Erectus will show above here and then trim Nanjenshan like this to create the same flow of the stones with the plants also here. The final touch okay. of the tank. Thank you very much. Thank you. We decided to get back. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Well. Thank you, Luca. It's good enough? Good enough. Let me summarize what I learned and hopefully you guys have learned from, from this. I have six points to, to summarize this whole thing. Point number one, the soil placement. You put it high in the foreground and then you push it back to cover the base layer fertilizing substrate. Number two, you have to use thin rocks instead of bulky rocks in order to have much space for planting in between and in the, at, at the back of the aquarium. Number three, you need to glue the rocks together even though you feel that they are very stable in the tank. Number four, you take care of the flow, and I'm not talking about the process of, uh, of Luca planting, but I'm talking about the flow, the visual flow of the layout. And that is very important, more important than, than what we think it should be. Uh, number five, you use bigger leafed plants in the foreground and delicate leafed plants in the background so that you have something behind the rocks that, that would accentuate the, the curvature, the, the strong feeling of the rocks to have some delicate things behind it. And number six, how you plant the stem plants, you should plant them one by one, stem by stem to ensure the, uh, the flow, the water flow uh, in between them to bring CO2 to the plants. Don't go anywhere because you will see how this tank looks in a couple of weeks. And uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget anything to, to support our channel. And thank you again for being here. Another master at Green Aqua, another great workshop. Thank you very much, Palash. For me, it's an honor to be here and I'm very happy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.